how are you? And welcome back to the Late Night Gag. A few moments ago, we were just discussing a great man and paying tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who is an advocate to this great nation, who fought against poverty and crime and just things that went on in the world that he did not like. Racism, freedom for us to speak, just different things that we as Americans should come together and just have that one voice and one sound that he always wanted. And you know, today in today's society, there is so much crime going on with us young black African American males, females, and just us general as a whole population as African Americans. We have shootings, robberies, break into homes, families going against families, and it's just horrible and it's really getting out of hand. What do you feel Dr. Martin Luther King strive for as an advocate to this great nation to get all of that taken care of that we wouldn't have to go through all of it again? First of all, Luther King strive for excellence. Okay. He strive for you to be the best at whatever you count out to be. We as an African American nation have not always did our best. Right. We came from slavery and we did we encountered so much back then to become one and grow and build ourselves as individuals where we are today. Some individuals are not self consistent of who they are. They hide behind closed doors and not be the person that they actually inspire to inspire to be. Right. By me being tidy, I inspire to be more than anyone can say. I'm my own individual. No one can take that from me. You cannot take my manhood. You cannot take my livelihood. You cannot tell me about my upbringing because you was not there. Right. So it's so much that you have to instill in yourself to want to have that ability, mm -hmm. to want to have that goal. To want to be that person that is going to be beyond their limit. Okay. I consider myself to be an eagle. If you know what an eagle is, an eagle flies or soars beyond their limits. I am an eagle. A flying you can't, eagle. I'm a flying eagle. You cannot tell me I'm not an eagle because I soar. You fly. You don't fly. You just. You, I soar. You soar. See, when you fly, your wings flap. I soar. See, I I cruise. See, when you soar. You go like this. You see, it's, it's smoother when you soar. You soar beyond your limit. See, if I'm flying, I'm trying to get there. But see, when I soar, I'm already there. You're on your way. I'm, I'm already there. You're on your way. He's I'm there. already He's there. there. All right. I'm there. Sapphire. Crime. And our community. It's big. We have people losing their lives. People going to jail over the dumbest things. Family going against family. People breaking into homes. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was an advocate who was against all that. Who wanted us to have freedom of speech. Freedom to walk. Freedom to go anywhere we want. Do you think that some of us are hitting ourselves from having that freedom sometimes when we go out and make these dumb mistakes? Yes, I do. Um, I think that first and foremost, um, fighting in our community and the, that violence, it really is a sign of ignorance and immaturity because all it says is I have not educated myself enough to know how to handle situations better than this simple way, mm -hmm. you know. And I think that it takes a real ignorant person and a real a stupid person to just sit there and say, oh girl, well, I'm going to pop her because she did this, or, oh girl, I'm going to go shoot you know, her because she did this, but I say, instead of me saying, you know what, I'm going to go to this individual and I'm going to work out the problem that we have. Or, better yet, let me just cut off all ties with this individual and go on and live my life instead of, you know, doing something that will cause damage permanently to my life, that will cause me to lose my freedom, and then may take this individual's life. Well, you know, actually, I believe that some people actually do things of that nature is it simply to fit in with their peers or to show out. I don't think they actually do it, you know, to try to find out what the situation is. They do it just to make themselves seem bigger than what they are. Well, if because if you witness, if you realize by us going out to different clubs, we could be standing and not know nothing going on. And the person that's getting beat up, jumped, tend to not know anything that's going on. Well, I it's, mean, it's outrageous. I don't know. I've, done, I, I, I've had a fight at the club maybe three times in my life. But in, in one of the times, I did not know what was going on. What happened was someone attacked someone that I was with, you know, and I, they didn't even know each other. It was just a random bump on the club, 
and girl, you push me too hard, you bump into me too hard, so I'm gonna check you, then you attack me, you accidentally hit me, so I'm gonna fight back. That's like going to Houston a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it, it goes on out here It goes too. on everywhere, yeah. but that that was that was something that happened when I was a little bit younger. So I've learned. I wouldn't have had, I wouldn't handle a situation like that any longer, you know. Um, but and then other times, at other times I was in immature relationships, so I had relationship issues happen at the club. But basically, it's still is immature because anyone that has to fight publicly, that's a sign of immaturity. You know, I don't care how it's done. If you have to publicly go there with somebody, then it's a sign of immaturity. You're not thinking about your freedom or this person's freedom because you can do a lot of time behind fighting somebody. Or it can escalate to... You, you can lose your life you behind can lose your trying life. to fight somebody. Like, seriously, and it's really not worth it. You know, it's, it's just not worth it. So as far as fighting and violence and all that, I'm just not for it. I'm, I'm no longer doing life. I have a scar on my face, and I love my face, that is going to permanently be there for the rest of my life because... I acted in a violent act, you know, and I'm not going to get emotional about it, but, you know, it's it's a permanent scar. It's something I have to look at every day for the rest of my life, all because of something that could have been. Can you show me that scar? <laughs> it's right here. You can't really see Well, that's the scar. red tender part around your right, nose yeah. there, I can see. Yeah, so, <laughs> actually, I had to kind of get a little I minor see. little nose job to get that stitch back up, but, you know. It happens, and it ha it's something that happened when I was younger, and it's something that I have to live with for the rest of my life. This could have been a lot worse. This could have been a broke, a paralyzed arm. I could have been, I had a broken neck. It could have been a lot worse than just simply this. But I guess when y'all fight over, y'all really must fight. Y'all must go for blood bad. That makes me really tear down <laughs> and stuff over there. Well, okay. The topic at hand is basically crime. Um, we've had, you know, lo not locally in Baton Rouge, but in New Orleans in the last month or two months or so, we've had a couple of shootings. We've lost a couple of people such as Messi Maya, who was a local gag artist who liked rest to crack jokes, rest in peace to her. And they lost a rap artist, uh, Magnolia Shorty, who was a great advocate to her community, who loved to do things that she did. How do you feel that this shooting that goes on in our community, and I think New Orleans now is the second largest city in the nation. in the nation who had the largest shooting population on killings in America. Why is that? Why is it and it's it's not the white on black, the black on white, it's the black on black crime and why is why is it so much crime towards our own peers and towards one another? Since, Andy, I, since I was a little boy, New Orleans was perceived to me to be like a very dangerous place. And And it's really and, not. You know, it's it's not, really it's not, not but it's still certain places in New Orleans that I'm not going to dare to go, you know, mm -hmm. and that's just me personally. Personally, um, Messi Maya, on the other hand, I think was a little bit different because I love Messi Maya. First, I personally love Messi Maya, you know. I got what, you know, she was doing or he was doing and everything, but I do know people that took offense to what he did. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if when he did what he did, he was making sure that those people were okay or they were even aware because sometimes you sit there and you read somebody and catch them off guard, they're going to retaliate. Now, right. I'm not saying they retaliated the right way, but it's just, it's real. People retaliate when they feel like, you know, they are offended, which is why we are very careful of what we say on our show because we don't want to offend anyone. We don't want somebody right. just randomly coming up to us trying to cause problems with us when we're out having a good time. You know what I mean? So right. I just feel like, you know, um, like I say, I didn't have a problem with messing with what Maya was doing, but I just feel like maybe it could have been done differently, and his life may still, he may still be living. Magnolia Shorty, I'm not sure what happened with her, but I heard that the, the gunshots were not even intended for her, so with her, it was more so being at the wrong place at the wrong time, and that could happen to anybody. Right. Because somebody could very much be coming for, you, for me, and you get hurt, right. or vice versa. So... You know, all of those things you have to be aware. My biggest thing with, to anybody is just be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of the people that you hang around. Be aware of... You have to be aware, especially... Be very cautious. Right. And the things that you say, don't always think that things you have to say to that person are just outrageous. It has to be a read. You don't always have to talk to somebody just to read them or make them feel less of a person because it's going to get you hurt in the end. You have something to say to other people. Yes, be mindful of who you tell different things to. Right. Simply, you can be telling your best friend something of, regarding somebody else, but you don't realize your best friend is telling somebody else something that you have said. So be mindful. 
be cautious, and say things of good nature and not of bad nature because it can easily get back to someone and put you in a situation that your life can be in jeopardy. Make sure, and make sure you guys don't be afraid to talk to your peers. They're not out to harm you. If you have something go on, just open your mouth. Don't just try to solve the problem on your own because it can't get you hurt. And if you're hanging with a group and you know you don't fit in that group at all, remove yourself immediately. Get away. And, a, and another thing is, people think that the police are always against you, but you don't realize the police department is to protect you. They're right. for you. They're not against you. So if some, if you're put in a situation that you know that you should not have been in, be go to the police department. Let them know what's going on. So therefore, when it comes back to you, you have already covered yourself. And be honest with yourself. This crime has to stop. It is 2011. It's time to wake up. Do things your way or hit the highway, baby. And I don't mean do things the wrong way. Do them the right way. It's never too late to get your life in order. We're here live at the Late Night Gag. This is just our opinion once again. We're not trying to harm anyone or hurt anyone. It's just our opinion coming from our hearts so you know that we care about what's going on in our community. So once again, we're here at the Late Night Gag. We'll be right back.